Hello, everyone. We are back with the other episode of the Young Foolish Podcast, and this week we're going to talk about weather. It is a topic that's always coming up in small talk, but、uh, there's really a lot more to it, and there's also a lot of ways we could go about it, and a lot of、uh, different directions we could take this. This is、uh, once again suggested by Raymond. Thank you very much because it's a topic that I、uh, have thought a lot about because I,、uh, as I've mentioned before, is pretty interested by spaces, by our environments, and、uh, weather is a huge aspect of that. It's a huge aspect of the natural aspect of the environments we're in, and I think for a lot of people, it affects them a lot more、uh, than might they even realize or think about. So.、Um, There's obviously other directions we could take this, but to start, this is something that I、uh, definitely think a lot about when I'm talking about weather. So why don't we go from there before we get into anything else?、Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think、uh, weather is pretty neat. I mean, it really tells a lot.、Um, you know, as in recent years, climate change has been a big issue,、um, but. I think overall, through seasons, I think we could see a lot of changes <laughs> through, you know, in nature,、um, as well as we just slide climate change in there real quick.、Um, yeah, I think seasons really affect nature as well as、mm-hmm. the people, right?、Uh, communities as well.、And、you see a lot of northern,、uh, higher up communities kind of really built and prepared、mm-hmm. for the winter, whereas you know having someone. From the equator or closer, you know where it's hot,、um, they really struggle to adapt to the weather.、Um, you know when when I first came to Canada on the plane right here, I can I I feel bad still. You know I still dream about this sometimes. I feel bad for all the passengers because as a kid, I wasn't really prepared <laughs> for、no. you know the the total change. Of a temperature, so I sneeze、oh, nonstop、no. all the time. Twelve <laughs> hours of flight. Are brutal. I'm sure even as a the kid, the only time he stopped. They're probably like, even even on the plane, they still <laughs> recorded it on the seismographs down here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it was pretty bad. The only time you know that that I really stopped was when I fell asleep. That was only for like a few hours,、Oof. and then back to sneezing.、Um, my nose will run a lot,、mm-hmm. but I mean, you know, when you have, when you come from a place, you know, like close to Guangzhou or Guangzhou,、mm-hmm. um, like where the winter, I guess, quote unquote, winter, is around twenty two, twenty four degrees. <laughs> <laughs> um, the winter in Ontario is pretty bad. Uh, so, I think, I think it really changed how I perceive weather. Right, I kind of took the heat for granted. I'm always constantly, you know, hot. You know, like got turn on the AC or fan.、Yeah. But here, it's completely different during winter and spring times. You get snow like thirty centimeters. It's crazy. You know,、um, you know these past. Few, you know, maybe in the last month or so, there's been a lot of snow here in Ontario.、Mm-hmm. So that really changes up how you travel, right? Traveling is a big thing. It affects、uh, what you wear. It affects the places you really want to go if you want to go.、Mm-hmm. So it, I, I see weather as not really an obstacle, but kind of just,、mm-hmm. you know, a way to to change things up. You know, every once in a while. And we're kind of lucky in Canada to really have the、mm. four seasons because it is really nice to experience the differences.、Um, you know, autumn got the falling leaves, and you know, during、uh, summer you got the green <laughs> greener leaves. <laughs> Just <laughs> it's it gets very cold and very hot、um, around here, but. It's nice to experience them, right? You you kind of take advantage of the beach on a really hot day to the fullest extent, right? You you take you know I've never been to boggling, but you know skiing or snowboarding or 
know, any of that to the fullest extent after a big snowfall. You know, it's it just it really opens up for new opportunities. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. what? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I was just going to say that yeah. all of these things that you bring up are really vel- relevant in the sense of that. Uh, for me, when, when I talk about what there are a lot, I think about is how it kind of affects the way people feel, their mood, and all that type of things. And a lot of these activities and possibilities uh, that, that you uh, bring up are, um, are derivatives of the weather almost in the sense of like, if you don't want to be shoveling uh, s- uh, snow, maybe don't live somewhere that snows all the time, right? And if you have certain allergies or you have certain uh, conditions that, you know, maybe really cold or really hot weather or maybe uh, high humi- uh, weather with a uh, high humidity would negatively affect you, and then, you know, that's something to consider. And that's also all of those things are going to affect how you feel, right? Because your body literally physically feel different too. So I know for a lot of people with the winter, with, uh, you know, more more gray, with, with rain, all that. And when it gets gloomy for a lot of people, they struggle mentally to deal with that. Or even just having to stay inside a lot more because it's just harsh out there. And that could affect people negatively in that sense. And also for people who really, uh, really need that, the, those who really enjoys being out at the beach or uh, everything else they're able to do with hotter weather and the sun, you take that away from them, then all of a sudden the quality of life for them decreases by a lot and they, they don't feel so good about that. So whether the differences and what you're able to do in each season, each type of climate, and how that affects you is something that I think is uh, is something to really consider, something to really realize. Um, like you gotta realize what what you kind of want and um, what suits you. So for you saying that uh, experiencing all four weather, all four seasons, and uh, all the different weather pattern that comes with those seasons is something that I think. Um, some people, especially in Canada, don't quite take advantage of or don't realize how important it is. Whereas others don't quite realize that they really don't like that and they don't like some of these seasons and they would rather not. So for I just don't think a lot of people quite understand how much it's affecting them and which ones they really like. And that for me is something that I think a lot about when it comes to weather. Yeah, I think... You know, a lot of times you get asked the question like, oh, what's Mm -hmm. your favorite season, right? And a lot of people, they don't think too much about it. Rather, they they think, you know, like on the dot, right? Let's say, oh, like, you know, like they had a really, you know, they they love skiing and stuff. So they choose, uh, you know, like winter. But in in that sense, they really hate Mm -hmm. the other parts, right? Shoveling snow, like you said, and like driving um, just you know <laughs> like, okay the yeah, cold yeah it's just certain things about it they might not like it but you know they just oh well i love skiing and in the winter i can and they just end up saying that without really taking a deeper look at all the different aspects right yeah 100 percent. and it yeah how it's, uh, <laughs> i thought you know Lawrence was gonna ask something <laughs> not really i don't have much to add to that one um <laughs> so i just generally agree with uh, what uh-huh. you guys have said up to this point I will say, as far as weather goes, I just feel like sun is almost always better than cloudy weather. Almost always. Hmm. Granted, when it gets hmm. super foggy, that's pretty wavy. I fucks with that heavy, too. <laughs> yes, sir. But otherwise, that's I prefer my nice. sun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, if we're going to talk about our, you know, our uh, preferences, I guess I, uh, I do actually really, really appreciate the, the rain that comes in Pacific Northwest. But I also get tired of it. Yeah. So I, I so the vibe, the everything about it is great. But then when it actually lasts for longer, when you realize for like a quarter of the year to a third of the year, you're getting the rainy season where it rains almost every day and when it doesn't, it's most likely going to be cloudy. And then say, okay, I don't actually like that. But when it's happening for the first little bit, I'm like, oh, yeah, this so is bad, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> 
Or if you get a break, if you get a couple mm-hmm. weeks of uh, sun and, cl- uh, and clear skies, and then it goes back to it, then it's not so bad. But it's those times when it continues. This is rain and after You barely rain after get rain any after sun rain. and all that. Yeah, yeah. The thing, it really gets mm-hmm. rough. So I love those aspects of Pacific Northwest and the rain. But I also don't like it when <laughs> it just keeps happening. That, that bit sucks. Whereas I have the experience of living out here and experiencing the winter in Ontario as well, where it's much colder. You get a lot more snow. But one thing that also happens is that you have clear skies. You get to see the sun, right? It's not going to be cloudy all the time. You, like, it's not so gloomy. So even with the cold and the snow that you have to deal with, there are these other aspects that I actually like. So compared with each other, I like the rain more than the snow. I prefer when it's not that cold. But then I also just love having clear sky and the sun, right? So there are aspects I don't like and aspects I like when it comes to winter on both sides of the country. Mm. I will say I feel like it's just been raining less every year. I don't know. Is that just me? Maybe, maybe I'm just tripping, but I remember as a kid, it used to be just mm. relentless. Absolutely relentless. I think, mm, I think you just have been going outside much less. That uh, might be the case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll touch some grass. Uh, that's bro. probably it. <laughs> like because whenever I come back, I, I, I really notice yeah. that. But that's also because when you're not experiencing mm. that um, regularly, right? Maybe it'll stand uh, out over more, here. Yeah. Yeah, right. So when you come back, it does stand out more. But also, I'll go back, and the first two weeks, it'll be raining straight. And you're like, wow, this is something that happens every year, and it sucks. And then mm-hmm. it's not, not so long later, it's just going to go back to rain and gloom, and it's okay. Wow, this kind of sucks. But I guess you can also get used to it. Uh, but when you really see it, it's hard to ignore it. And then it becomes uh, like you could get used to it, but at the same time, you still won't like it. It's just like, yeah. okay, right? So it's never going to get to the point yeah. where you fall in I love feel, with Yeah, it. I feel like your point is right because I don't really care if it's raining if I'm not going out. If anything, it's just, oh, look, it looks kind of pretty. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. I think what you said earlier about like all, oh, like maybe it's just yeah. because, you know, when you were a kid, right? Like comparatively. I think it's also because when you're a kid, you, you know, growing up in this type of, I guess, environment, oh, man. you get used to it, right? Yeah, so that's like, all you ever think about. So, like, a lot of the good memories you make are when it's raining. Um, so when you look back, yeah, finally, I'm thinking, you, you think of rain. Whereas now you notice, yeah, no, now like you notice school, like, more. Uh, whenever like it rains, obviously, they just keep the kids inside. You guys remember that? Inside day, mm. outside day, your classic, mm. your classic. Mm. And the yeah. same thing goes with like snow, right? Like back in the day when people were, you know, were younger, a lot of them loved snow, uh, especially out west when you don't get snow near as much. It's all fun and games. But then later <laughs> on, well, when, when, you, when you get older and you're like, hey, yo, uh, driving this sucks, uh, especially when most people don't know how to drive in that because they don't experience it uh, regularly yeah, enough. Sucks. And also the city doesn't deal with it properly because it's not set up to do that. And like over here, it's like they know what to do and they do a good job on it regularly because they experience it all the time, right? So uh, you also realize that, you know what? I don't actually like shoveling snow that much. So uh, this is not fun and games no more. It, it, there are other, <laughs> other aspects to it that, you know, actually uh, kind of drags. Yeah, like over here, you get like, you, you could get people to... to you know, um, shovel snow for you, right? Or, you know, snow blow for you. Meanwhile, like over there, I assume if you have that as a your job, you're you yeah. do well under the poverty <laughs> line. <job. laughs> I've never, like, I've never had to shovel snow. Yeah. One day a year. Like, it's usually, like, for the driveway, no. at least, it's usually like, oh, it's fine, you can still get out, no problem. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you live in a townhouse in greater Vancouver area. Yeah. So first of all, there, there isn't this that is, much, not much to shovel yeah. in it. 
Yeah, and then it also doesn't snow that、exactly. hard for that little bit to actually become a problem. Yes,、yeah, so、I mean. Whereas if you actually, yeah, yeah. yeah, if you live in a house and it does snow, you know, a decent bit, which it does a few times each year, and then like just because the amount of ground it covers, should have been grabbing a like, truck. Like just that that much, then it's just like, hey, yo, nah, come on. But then out east, you really see people living in houses and how much、uh, snow they get. Just like, ah.、Uh, <laughs> Probably want to hire someone to do this, or get some sophisticated machinery to to deal with this, because actually shoveling all that on a regular basis is a, it's a little much. Damn, yeah, yeah. Is there? Yeah, I feel、Do、like people ever make also one of the biggest things you know. Is there such like, thing as a heated driveway where it's just like heated underground? So it just yeah, that's a thing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There is. Yeah. Imagine your power going like out. Like they get um, and then it just like, freezes I, over. I think it's like heated concrete. And then it's just ice. Yeah, yeah, that's rough. Yeah. Oh. Then you gotta shovel the ice. Yeah. No, like I'm pretty sure、uh, here, especially like in like colder regions of Canada, like you, 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 bro, you know, you know, you know,、uh, families, families balling if they got like a heated like. Like a、uh, stone pathways for you know their、mm. their house you know it's pretty yeah it's like heated seats in cars you know it's like damn you don't really think about that hype,、yeah. but it's it's kind of nice like yeah man what like, other type of weather but,、uh, do you like、yeah. um I don't know like you said. I I really enjoy the rain.、Mm-hmm. I appreciate the rain, especially you know like now not really living in BC. I、uh, I kind of miss the rain and、mm-hmm. the rain like the、It's, smell. It never gets、rain. to that vibe out east. It just doesn't get to that point for some reason. I don't know if it's like the the, the kind of、yeah. uh, what uh, what what do you call it the trees and grass and all the actual、um, you know plant stuff.、Mm-hmm. I think so. I think it has a lot to do with the,、uh, you know,、mm-hmm. the greens, right? Because over there, there's a lot of national parks, lots、mm-hmm. of lots of forests, right? Lots of different types of biomes,、um, especially you know more green. But here, it's it's a little bit different. I feel like you you can only really get that like maybe once or twice a year when it's. The right、mm-hmm. season at the right time and with enough season, rain. Because sometimes like it just doesn't rain for long、yeah. enough. Like you get rain for sure, but it doesn't last long enough, right? Yeah, yeah like it's gone、mm-hmm. within like thirty minutes. It's crazy.、Um, I、mm-hmm. think it's more fresh, you know, in、uh, you know, in the west. I think,、um, yeah, I just really miss that.、Uh, and yes, sir, it gets the wavy. Fogginess. Yeah, yeah I, it does. I、like、it does cool. It it does.、Uh, that that is pretty cool. Except the thing you said about、uh, the smoke.、Uh, whenever dude, that was, dude, dude, I think it looks so wavy. <laughs> Don't get me wrong; it's terrible for everything else, but it looks fucking dope as shit. You can't tell me it doesn't look dope as shit. I don't know. I think fog, the fog、bro. is different. Like, <laughs> like it's a little bit different than fog, and that little difference. Does something for me where I just don't think it's as、uh, wavy, quote unquote. I don't. I wouldn't even use. I、that. think it looks cool. I, I don't know.、Really cool. I don't know which one I would. I mean, but,、yeah. terrible, terrible. The forest is on fire, but man, it looks cool as shit. So would you say that you like how you get forest fires in Vancouver or not? Well, I, I don't think we got that many this last year. Like I don't remember it being particularly wavy. So no, last year I rate the. Last year, I I, I went to forest fire zero out of ten. Don't remember it being way. <laughs> so so are you、But、saying then, that you were were when we had summer school that one year? Remember when we had summer school that one year? That remember, was way.、Yeah. That was a solid. Yeah. Visuals ten out of ten. Especially when you get uptown, like for some reason that low area, like it it, it just I don't know. It would look even more than the other parts. I thought it looked for whatever shit. reason. Like the sky was just pretty much orange. Very cool. Nice. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, more, uh, uh, Next up, uh, yeah. top ten, top ten forest fires. Rated the coolest by the looking zone. forest fire. My favorite forest fire. <laughs> 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 oh man it's my favorite season man uh, well I guess for me something weird that, that I like when it comes to weather is um, hot and humid uh, a lot of people you know it bothers them a lot and it bothers um, my hair. it's very uncomfortable for them but when I'm down in like the Caribbean area whether mm-hmm. that is uh, you know Cuba or like I don't know Miami or anywhere in that area where it does get really hot and um, humid, it feels great. Like physically, you sweat and uh, you get you know wet and all that, and that isn't it's not the most pleasant, you know great, yeah. but it's not it's yeah it's it's also not that bad. But mentally and, and, and the way you kind of feel like it, it's it is, great. It, is. it does something for me. I know exactly like, what you're talking like, about. It, uh huh. Like if it, it feeds me in some kind of way, like it's uh, it just it, I quite like it. Um, yeah, I, I guess it, that's probably one of the weirder things I like. Uh, one of the weirder, I don't know, mm. uh, what do you call it? Climate pattern that I like. Yeah, climate. Yeah, bro. Yeah, speaking about the heat. Yeah, I like it when it's mm-hmm. like really mm. hot but there's a breeze yes sir. that like that nice breeze that like you know like it's not like every now and then it's kind of almost constant right one after another you kind of and yes, it's so sir. sunny and bright out and it's just <laughs> you sniff mm-hmm. the air mm. Mm. yeah it yes, is. Sir, yeah. Yes, that's nice. I think something that's, that's kind of nice. similar to that yeah. is also during summer when it cools down a little bit during the evening, right? So it's still pretty warm, but it's cool mm-hmm. enough for you to put on a jacket. And then, and then, like that that type of setting with uh, the sunset oh, happening, dude, you know, when we'll, we'll it's just a little bit cooler mm-hmm. and you're just mm-hmm. out, it just it's a vibe. No, it you really know, it is. is a vibe too. It's like um, like we were just talking about oh. like the Caribbean areas where it's like super hot and humid. Uh, but then mm-hmm. at night, those areas at night, bro. Sheesh. Mm-hmm. That's that's what mm-hmm. you mean. For sure. Just a nice time. Yeah. And the humidity is mm-hmm. nice. And yeah, I feel like a lot of uh, yeah, I feel like a lot of places that are super hot during the day. Like, oh yeah. They come out at mm-hmm. night, right? But the nightlife in those you know cities, those parts of places are very. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, some people uh, have uh, stuff like siestas or something similar to that in the afternoon. And then usually you have uh, dinners that are really late or meals in general yeah. is really late. And those who have a lot of uh, late night snacks places, right? You have uh, whether that's street food or other type of, uh, uh, you know, kind of like tapa style uh, places where it's not like a full on restaurant, yeah, it's like just more meal. smaller things yeah Uh uh-huh so you have that going way away into the night and those are just very normal things um for that for that because of the temperature really right for those those places with the temperature like that like you see it all over the world well that is in the caribbean or in south america or a place like southern europe right spain definitely southern spain especially or uh places like north africa places like um well, various parts of Asia, for sure, the, like that, that is a thing. And that similarity definitely comes from that weather. Yeah, I wish we had that more here, man. Well, trying to get food late mm-hmm. night is like you got dons and that's it. Pretty much mm-hmm. almost. Yeah. Mm. I feel like a good representation of like, you know, like late night East Asian um, parts is probably like oh, the yeah. night market you guys have, right? Yeah, like... It's nice because, like, going back to China uh, a few years back, it was, like, 3, 4 a.m., and we were just having dim sum, right? And, like, the, the whole street, you know, was lit up. All the stores were open, mm-hmm. and then they were closed during the day, which was interesting. I was like, damn, like, we mm-hmm. don't have that stuff here. You know, people literally live their best lives at night, and then, you know, during the day, they either chill, right, and, mm-hmm. you know, like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's a different type of Yeah, vibe. definitely it's affects nice. people in so many different ways. Like, 
in in lifestyle and in, in the activities they could do and the way they feel and all of that, right? Uh, and the part you went probably in the south, right? Uh, uh, whereas in the north, mm -hmm. it'll be very different, uh, especially because China decided that we're only going to have one time zone, even though yeah. it's yeah, a huge they did country. That. So, when did they do on. that? This mess, I'm assuming I just uh, never got that memo ages ago, eh? Yeah, they yeah they've always done that. Like uh, I think CCP decided on that all all the way back in the wow. day. Like they just like, hey yo, yeah, well, that's but we're just gonna keep everything dumb. the same. <laughs> that's Which, pretty dumb. Yeah. So 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 it adds to the effect of weather, right? So so literally uh, the times of sunset and uh, sunrise in some places are just extreme. Um, <laughs> wow, that's actually yeah, wild. that's pretty funny. Uh -huh. But in, in like other parts of Asia, right, mm -hmm. uh, in northern parts especially, it's not going to be like that. So it's not even like a cultural thing. Like it became a cultural thing based off of these habits and things that gets developed over time because historically the weather has been like that. Like that's definitely one of the biggest aspects of why it is Mm -hmm. the way it is and how so many places uh, have those things and they share, you know, that that factor. Mm. Yeah, I feel like weather plays a larger role than a lot of people, you know, usually think of it. Um, I feel like, you know, usually people, I mean, like even me, right? Like I'm just like, oh, like, like it, it, this is just what happens here, right? Oh, winter is just cold. Summer is just hot. Spring is just <laughs> kind of cold, you know? <laughs> falls kind of a little bit cold <laughs> nice <laughs> very, <laughs> very observant <laughs> descriptive i gotta say uh, what an uh, astute observation well, i will say uh, yeah <laughs> out east something like crazy something crazy <laughs> happens it's like you, you'll be like sometime midway through october right and then sometimes you'll still get really nice days even into the 20s and then what you have is one day mm. it's gonna make 20 something and then the next day, it's going to drop 20 degrees. It's just like, it's, I, I, just it snowing. changes so quickly. Like, what just yeah. happened? How is the temperature dropping 20 degrees overnight <laughs> like that? Like, what happened? How? Mm -hmm. But it happens over and over again. Like, like it's going to be that switch oh, that God. happens. And all of a sudden, you're not going to get this 10 degree weather. It, go, it could go up a little bit into the teens again. But it's never going to go back to that that high. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it'll drop more. But like it'll be kind of nice to like actually nice. And then there's going to be some switch that just happened really quickly within a day or two. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen in L uh, West. Yeah, not really. Well, I mean, it doesn't. It is pretty temperate out here. So it's <laughs> yeah. it, it never really reaches any crazy temperatures other than last year. That was hey, have I talked? Have I told you guys uh, about that one time where I got strep? Yeah, the, the car, car broke down on the hottest day. Yeah. Yo, what are the chances, man? Mm -hmm. The one day gets to like 42 degrees. How does it get to 42 degrees here? That makes no sense. That's literally Spain yeah. temperature, bro. That's Spain temperature. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? And then the car breaks down. That's southern know. Spain temperature. Is, you know, you, if you're in north, if you're in Basque country, it, it doesn't it doesn't get that high. We got to 42 right? here That's in That's literally Vancouver. like all, all the way down. How does that happen? Uh-huh. Heat dome. Crazy. Honestly, my goodness, yeah. and within the same year, you get historically <laughs> low temperature in yeah, BC as well. Climate change, man, crazy. <laughs> One year, just like <laughs> we we got all time high, and all time low. <laughs> We're too good, man. <laughs> Put in the work, break your records, man. Uh, and this, <laughs> yeah, I think, is a good transition yeah. into climate change, which is other thing we brought up. Um, something definitely important to address uh, when it comes to. Uh, weather, right? We've talked about this topic by itself. We've also said we're going to talk about it again in the future. And this is definitely a part of that future, even though it's not a standalone topic like it was. <laughs> but um, talking about climate change, especially in terms of weather, yeah. you are seeing some uh, pretty ridiculous stuff happening uh, with weather, weather patterns and just uh, abnormal things happening. I mean, even out here in the East, I was playing basketball outside and like 
late November, early December, and the weather wasn't that bad. Like it, it was nice. Like it was just really nice. And obviously, um, usually it wouldn't be like that. Usually, late October, sometime in November, it's gonna get into uh, snowing quite a bit. It's gonna come down in temperature. Not gonna get to its coldest until like sometime in January and February, but it definitely uh, isn't supposed to stay nice like that for that long, right? And then later on, mm -hmm. you saw some historical snowstorms, right? So it has something coming up really nice for quite a while. And once it hit, it hit hard. So abnormal things are happening in multiple places in Canada alone. <laughs> and the examples go on when you're talking yeah, about Texas worldwide. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Snow in oh. Texas. <laughs> yeah, man. Crazy, no, crazy. Yeah. Uh huh. Bro, even like a few years back, man, it was snowing in Egypt. That was that was pretty wild. Like, bro, I thought that was like, dude, what the fuck? I I never because it's a fucking yeah. desert, dude. What? And uh, Spain got snow too. Like, like I forget which year, but it was pretty recent, and people couldn't deal with it. They're like, hey, why is it? What's going on? We're not equipped for this. <laughs> Bananas. <laughs> Literally, like. <laughs> We don't have heaters at home. Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually so funny. Uh, yeah. Um, like, <laughs> it's rough. Yeah. My sister was telling me that because um, she's into like urban forestry or whatever. And I was just chatting with her about it real quick just to see if it's actually interesting. Yeah, well, we we got to get, get her, her on. And she was man, telling man, me like telling yeah, by 2050 or whatever, uh, this, this debate going on about whether or not urban or whatever – Whatever denomination of people is currently engaged in planting of trees here in urban areas, there's a big debate about whether or not they should plant native species or non-native species. And a big argument for the non-native species is that uh, come 2050, it's projected that Vancouver is basically almost going to be at San Diego levels. And then all the native species would die. So you'd be left with nothing. So wow. you might as well just start planting the non-native species now. Which is just crazy mm -hmm. to think about. That, yeah, yeah. That, that's very interesting because one of the things <laughs> about climate change that scientists have a very difficult time with is seeing just how much of an effect humans mm -hmm. have on climate change, right? So it, it's very difficult to say the things that we're, we're doing to negatively impact it, how much impact it's actually having and how quickly it's going to change things or how exactly it will change things. And similarly with the things we're trying to do to help it, just because of natural uh, variability and uh, the margin of errors in all these models, especially going later on to the future, and how many different factors are mm -hmm. coming into play and how these things could actually be impacting each other and causing effects that we're not even aware of. There are just so many well, things I mean, that we don't CO2 know exactly. Well, I mean, kind of like the gold standard? So, I'm pretty sure it's been... That, that's because that's, that's one of the things uh, that is actually much... Well, it's just much easier to see, like, statistically. Yeah. There's just a lot more that we could uh, actually use it, the information for as opposed to other things where it's like... Uh, we don't really know what exactly is going on. Yeah. Um, I feel like the CO2 is pretty good limit. Like with though, the. Because it's pretty resilient in mm -hmm. the atmosphere. So it's not like it's very easy to get back out of the atmosphere once it's in there. And then, because with methane yeah. or whatever, it deteriorates really relatively quick when I get to the higher atmosphere, I believe, or something along those lines. Even though it's a worse um, gas or whatever. Yeah. But then I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. it's just a, there's too much evidence that the human activity has gone ham with the CO2 parts per million. So. Yeah, with that oh, regards, yeah. Yeah. it's very clear that humans have done it. And like mm -hmm. the the thing is like the rate of climate change is just completely unprecedented and like it could just be totally random, but I mean with, mm -hmm. with humans pumping out CO2 at the rate that they've been pumping it out, it, I'm, I'm almost 100% confident it's all humans at this point. Yeah. Oh no, no I I don't think oh, there's yeah, no, any no. argument to say it's all random. Like the 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 stats, like the the, oh, all yeah, the research yeah basically can agree that human have uh, an effect for sure there's no doubt about that and uh, when it comes to co2 especially we're seeing like 
like humans are really doing a number, but that's only one aspect. That's only one factor that's affecting、mm-hmm. the climate, right? It's only one of the things we're doing, and how exactly that will even play out is kind of it's kind of hard to say, right? So, like twenty fifties, like if that does happen, that's absolutely crazy. But what if we're wrong? It's happened actually quicker. What if、uh, what、mm-hmm. if these records keep getting broken year after year? War. What if it's、was、just it, a little bit more extreme it, in these couple of years? But it's actually gonna take longer to get to that point. It's very difficult to say when exactly. I saw this from graph happen, or whatever.、Right? It was、um, taking data that one of the oil companies did. I think it was Shell or something, and it was like projecting their climate change numbers way back in like the eighties or nineties or something crazy like that. And they got it spot on, and they did nothing. They did jack shit, bro.、Mm-hmm. Like they, they they got it almost perfect, but their models were super、right. accurate, <laughs> super accurate、uh, on climate change, and they just didn't do shit. Because of course, I mean, it's the, the you know it's how they make、yeah. money, basically. Crazy. Uh huh. Man, big oil, all the stuff they did over the years. Fuck out of here. Terrible, man. man. Yeah, you know that I'm big on、um, you know.、Uh, Aspect of urban planning,、yeah. right?、Uh, and no matter how you look at it, some of the stuff they did back in the day、uh, to to kind of drive the car, no, de- no car centric, car dependent style of、uh, city design is is kind of wild. Like、uh, car companies and、uh, obviously oil companies were definitely working together, and they got some crazy stuff done, including buying out of.、Uh, Streetcars and whatnot, and getting rid of them, and just build roads instead for cars. And、uh, so, you know, both of these huge industries and whatnot will profit.、Um, and, and you definitely see with when it comes to、uh, the climate, they didn't care from day one. And we, even when they had more data and we're doing the research and making these models and seeing what they saw. They still just weren't doing anything, and then later on, the best you got from them is just、uh, green marketing, just、uh, greenwashing stuff. It's not actual anything、uh, really, you know. Yeah. Really effective or really、uh, genuine? Like you're not seeing them, you know. So, yeah, that that because it is the number one. The fossil fuel is the number one、mm-hmm. factor in terms of uh, uh, producing these.、Um, Like what the greenhouse gases, right? In in comparison to stuff like agriculture and、uh, well, the other stuff are even less. But like by far, it's it's pretty obvious that burning of fossil fuels and using these things、uh, is the number one contributor to to those levels. And damn, you know, if they had a model that accurate and they just literally didn't do anything, that's that's wild. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, see if I can pull it up real quick. But yeah, crazy, crazy stuff.、Mm-hmm. Well, we've actually been talking about this in this week's lecture、uh, in geography of tourism, and one of the things that that we are talking about is how. All these places are gonna get affected in、uh, different ways, in unequal ways, uneven ways,、mm-hmm. right? Oh, the- so, so like Ontario, for example. In at least a somewhat short term, it's gonna be, is most likely going to benefit in the sense of like it's not gonna be quite as、uh, cold in the winters and all that, and there's gonna be,、uh, you know, better and longer seasons for farming stuff, right?、Uh, there are just certain aspects that's going to help Russia, some places,、especially. and that's one of the reasons why. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why we talk about retiring in Russia. <laughs> if climate change really、uh, continues like that, you, you know, you might have to really、uh, just take advantage of,、um, well, make the most of the situation, take advantage of the facts that,、mm-hmm. that it has. Where in certain places, when it comes to tourism, like certain places that's already hot in the summer. Like they're gonna have even less time, that the, they might have to move、I、to think, winter only for people coming, and then other places where it's hot in the summer now, but people still go.、Uh, it's gonna be moving into more of the spring and the fall, right? So you're gonna see all these changes in, in, in people's behaviors. You're gonna see changes in lifestyles, and、um, 
whether just plays such a key part of people's lives, whether in the background or in something that's more prominent. And, and, and really, it doesn't feel like people understand just how much weather plays a role in, in their lives. And with climate change, it's, it's going to mess insane. up the weather. And it's going to mess up their Dude, lives like I mean, that. Right? Everything is interconnected in that It's a little unrelated mm-hmm. to weather, per se, but it is related to climate change. Dude, I wonder mm-hmm. how many countries are already planning. Because I feel like not enough are already planning for the um, climate refugees, man. It's going to be fucking insane. Like, uh, yeah. like what is it like? What's that one little country that's right beside India? Yeah, super low. Yeah, Bangladesh, Bangladesh. literally gone. Everything, Sri Lanka? Pretty much gone. Oh. The entire thing, Sri Lanka, gone. Bangladesh, gone. Everybody there is going to have to move. Do you know that Sri Lanka had like a land bridge to India back in the I day? Believe, yeah, yeah, I, I learned about it. I learned about pretty it in sure. my um, yeah. archaeology class. I don't know how long ago it was. It must have been a really long time I mean, ago. But. Long enough. It's probably like... Uh, anywhere in the ball uh yeah i don't know i don't know i actually don't know yeah but but all those places in the indian indian ocean like uh like what maldives yeah. and whatnot gone right i i it's because those those islands they sit like right on the <laughs> sea level like barely above the water like a little bit of rise is gonna be like first floods and then completely gone so like <laughs> Like you're talking about so many people. That's like it's not that like it's things get bad and they have to move. It's like it's literally impossible to live in those conditions. Like they, it's gone. It's just <laughs> gone. Like it's inhabitable. Yeah, like like it's got, yeah. First, it's gonna get to a point where it's bad, and some people are gonna want to get out, and then it's gonna get to a point where yeah. you literally can't live there, and then it's gonna be gone. <laughs> it's like, wild. And then where are they going to go? Like, it's uh, like there's millions mm, of exactly, people, hundreds like, of millions of people are going to get displaced by this worldwide. I th- I feel like in Canada we'll be doing okay-ish because we don't yeah. have that many like immediate neighbors that are going to get like so displaced that they have to come. So, you know, it's like it's whatever. But then like mm-hmm. like India and like China well, and shit. Canada also has old- and oh man, and then there's a big <laughs> coastal population mm-hmm. in Canada. I don't think it's as major. Like, um, I mean, a lot of like South Surrey and White Rock is going to be it, chilling. The farmland is going to get destroyed, but <laughs> other than that, we're chilling for the most part. Um, and Canada has a very small population, especially when you consider yeah, the, the geography land, uh, it has. Yeah, and uh, when you um, mm-hmm. see stuff happening, certain parts are going to become warmer and more habitable and... Uh, you know, more attractive for people to actually move there and whatnot. So in Canada, in that sense, it's not yeah, no, as not bad. Yeah, as bad. Bananas, bananas. Yeah. So honestly, I'm wondering if any of these countries are at all preparing for this like apocalyptic level climate refugee crisis that they're gonna have. I think they're they're probably going there's probably a lot of countries that's ha- that's uh making multiple models to see yeah. right seeing when things will happen seeing how many people uh, like what they, they will have to deal do? with and then just trying to figure out plans and solutions for each of those like, exactly it's, on it's that scale can you feed that many people can you house that many people yeah. <laughs> holy shit that makes everything that, that makes all like the war refugees just seem like peanuts man honestly like it's not even close like uh-huh like in europe yeah it's yeah, just like, different uh, yeah europe magnitude. Is, mm-hmm. look, the, look at the refugee crisis from like um the african countries and the middle eastern countries look at how much of the show that was man and bro in the states with like obviously uh, a lot of uh, Central and even North American people from Mexico trying to get into um, the U.S. Oh, refugee status, please. And mm-hmm. that's a total shit show there. But the numbers are just so small compared to what it's going to be, man. It's bananas. It's actually fucked. It's actually so fucked. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the thing is, it's also got to be somewhat gradual right even when it's really mm. quick year yeah by year it's still going to be gradual enough that people could kind of 
see the situation happening in real time and, and address these things, it's going to be real tough. Uh, and that is if it is really going to play out that drastically, right? And that is something we don't quite know for sure. And obviously, a lot of people, a lot of places are consistently and constantly trying to ameliorate the situation, try to slow it down, try to drag it out, trying to fix certain issues. So with that happening as well, it's, uh, it's even harder to say this uh, when, where, what rate stuff will happen. This is true. So it is definitely good that even at the worst case scenario, it's going to be somewhat gradual and it's not going to happen all of a sudden like uh, COVID yeah. did, for example. Uh, right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know, man. I, uh, I got some insider news from uh, someone who works at a it's gonna rain tomorrow. the weather uh, aspect. <laughs> <laughs> it could. But fuck, man. I just remember like talking. Um, they didn't disclose anything too big because like they can't, right? They, they signed. They legally can't say much. But from what I heard, um, literally within the next five years, it, it's going to shit. Like, it, it's real bad. They were literally like, bro, if I, were you, I wouldn't have kids, dude. I wouldn't want them to live. And, you know, yeah, it's going to be that bad. I was like, holy shit. You know, that kind of really, like opened up my eyes a little bit. I was like, I was like, dude, if it gets that bad within five years, because everyone's projecting for... 2050 2045 right but it, it it's going up exponentially like it, it's fucked so mm -hmm. <laughs> now like i'm just kind of hoping for the best <laughs> like mm -hmm. there's not much we can do because i asked i was like i was like you know like but like even if you know everything were to all these countries were to start you know like reverting it trying to like figure yeah. it out now there's already so much they were like no nah, it's too late like this so mm -hmm. i was like yeah and like with change it's gonna take like f at least 50 years to see that's, some yeah. like you know like drastic change that's gonna happen mm -hmm. but we don't have Man. the time right they should have everybody should have so, just hopped on nuclear decades ago that's really what they should have been done man it's tragic oh yeah hey didn't france announce you're gonna yeah, have a whole bunch yeah, of yeah, uh, doing stuff. But that's the issue that's the yeah, issue with really good. Nuclear. it takes yeah. so long to get it online it takes so long to yeah. set it up. So yeah. by the time you realize shit, I need nuclear. It's too late. Mm. Honestly, I don't I know. I mean, the thing about solar, solar power is that power it's just so dependent on your region. Play. And even then, it's still got its issues. Uh, even energy storage. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Makes it a little tricky. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's got a... Yeah. Like... So it's got a lot yeah. of issues. The thing it, is like, I don't think it'll ever be the primary yeah, thing, but it definitely like, I mean, it, does have a it's gotta research place it. in supplementing the energy grid. Yeah, and for certain regions, it could be a huge I mean the, time for sure. The, the crazy thing yeah. about it is that you could set up like yeah. a relatively small, by relatively small, I mean fucking huge, but on a global scale, relatively small like solar plant in the yeah. Sahara Desert that could power all of Europe, and it would only take like a small fraction of the Sahara Desert. But the, the problem... But how could you stat that? Yeah, you can. And how could you store yeah, the that, energy? The how issue, could yeah. you move the energy? Right? That's where all it falls those apart, things man. are like. That's you know, where it falls apart. Well, you yeah. really cannot transport that much energy. Like just I mean, physics like, wise, I, there's too many. Like the physics is too think. difficult. They've tried. But yeah, you just can't. You you need it to be more localized. And also yeah. just setting that yeah. stuff up in in like, Sahara. Like, how are you actually gonna set that up properly yeah, and maintain yeah. them? Like, I feel like, I feel like the maintenance. Like, like the maintenance it's a bit would of nowhere, probably kinda. be secondary. Like if if you could, if you had the option to build something that could power all of Europe, I'm sure you could figure out how to set up the infrastructure to maintain it. But I mean, honestly, it's just it's you you can't have yeah. your power being that centralized when it's solar because just the physics just doesn't work out. You can't, yeah. Because literally, just transporting it across the, I mean, the from the Sahara to Europe. Just yeah. the distances involved and the resistances and the cables and whatnot, it just doesn't work, <laughs> which is tragic. I think we should all move to the Sahara. Amen. 
people come out with a lot of brand new in uh, like I don't know. I think I think it's it's not like impossible, I'd say. You know, I feel like sooner or later when people get desperate enough there's definitely going to be new technology for it yeah but maybe I mean, the power trans probably yeah. not going to be as insane or like as yeah like it's not going to be enough but i don't know we'll have Hopefully. to see yeah i mean i don't know man because i mean like for like short term wise i think solar is the way to go because mm-hmm. yeah like mm-hmm. you guys said nuclear takes time so on, until Dude, we get the get, um, going, I think tidal um, power going. That's so what they got to get going. So what's needed? <laughs> no, I'm yeah, but I mean, it's, you have tides it's everywhere. It's not as efficient. Like yeah. the, the the thing that isn't efficient is I forget. There's like I was watching a video. Yeah, there's like two types of tidal power, and one really isn't is only feasible in very select locations. Mm-hmm. Like I think one place in France has it, but that's where. Uh, Wait, let's just get everyone to yeah. move there. <laughs> yeah. That's very easy, right? <laughs> easy solution. Well, it, uh, where it's like, I forget what it is, but it's like, it just uses the turbines and it just lets uh, the water flow at a specific time. So it equalizes the differences in between like, oh, this inlet has this water level, huh. water outside at this level. And then as it flows through the turbine, it powers it. But the issue with that is that it only works if you have a tidal okay. range of like at least five meters. So if there's not like a five meter difference in between the tidal range, then it's not worth. And even then you still need to have like a, a closed nah. system of water. So like an inlet or something. And unless you go and artificially make it then, okay. I mean, it's obviously just not gonna happen. Um, but then the other one is where you just literally mm-hmm. stick turbines underwater where tides flow and then boom, power. I don't know what the, yeah, I don't know how that was going. Well, I think that one, the biggest issue with that one is just making something resilient enough to like not to just function year round, you know, without too much maintenance or something like that. Yeah. No, but we could, yes, and we sir. are definitely trying all of these different options, right? And we are seeing places implementing all of these options more and more. Some for more short term, some for more long term, some more experimental, others more actual, uh, you know, really liable, such as uh, France and all, all the nuclear stuff they've announced. Um, which is definitely going to help uh, in so many ways uh, later on. Um, but like places that could do hydro should definitely uh, you know use that more because BC, right? Uh, yeah, so many so many things are crazy expensive. But you know what? <laughs> Electricity isn't uh, hydropower. Yeah, you know sure. we go ham with that. Like, like it's it's good. It's reliable and. Um, when you have those as options, you really got to take advantage My of it. My headphones lied to me. They did not have an hour and a half left. Okay. Tragic, hold on. I... Okay. I... <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, we can finish it up soon. Yeah, no, it's I all good. Go I think we've talked soon. a lot uh, about the, you know, the two aspects of weather that we really considered when we're thinking about this video uh, which is kind of how it affects people mm-hmm. in so many different ways and how uh, climate change has kind of changed you know the weather patterns all around the world and in turn it's gonna affect people even more and it's gonna lead to some serious and crazy <laughs> uh you know issues some of incredible magnitude that that you know if if stuff plays out like that you know it's uh it's scary but we also talked about how there are many different things people are trying to do so many uh ideas out there so many experimental stuff out there and there's also just a much more uh you know bigger focus on it It, including like when you're looking at research from 70s and 80s uh you know barely anything and then once it hit the the early 90s it started going up and it just keeps going up every year since like mm-hmm. like they, if you were to look at the graph a number of uh academic paper on this stuff being published the numbers you know the, the slope insane stuff right so there's definitely a lot of effort a lot of focus and the fact that we're talking about it affect um the fact that there are these um climate summits there are all these um people with uh, a, a huge platform really focusing on it and talking about the different ways 
that we could do something about in our personal lives as well as uh, really pushing companies and larger entities to do something about it. And also people who are actually trying to find uh, new technology and solutions, right? All of these things are working towards that to ensure that hopefully, you know, we don't mess up the planet as much or as quickly. So stuff like the weather doesn't change mm -hmm. so drastically and especially so uh, quickly that people could continue their lifestyles and uh, make plans for the future in all aspects of their life, including stuff like traveling, which is a huge, uh, you know, privilege already. But and, you know, from basic things to bigger things, like everything that people want to do, hopefully they could actually do it and uh, not not get completely wrecked because uh, of these huge things that could have happened because of uh, climate change and its effect on weather, especially. And uh, to end the episode, mm -hmm. we'll obviously do a highlight of the week. Yeah, I don't know who wants to go first. Uh, hey yes sir two, two, that's right you told me boom. before we started yes sir hell yeah have to get hey, the ele yeah. electric car now <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you know only, it's only cool with tesla you know <laughs> other electric cars nah it's just tesla um but yeah um gonna be on the road soon what? So, watch out watch out boys <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh yeah no, good. that's my biggest highlight uh, Go ahead, Lauren, i'll just do my uh my midterms all done so we lit yes sir until the next midterms that's about it congrats yeah it's a continuation of last <laughs> week's pretty much Hell yeah. uh, that's pretty good glad to see stuff are still going along well and uh you know you got a little bit of time before the next uh, round hopefully um for me got some highlights that's uh, more leisure based i uh for one i started using <laughs> i started using opera gx uh i gotta say oh. great browser i like i like um actually just organization of it there's um yeah makes makes my life pretty easy uh sorting everything and uh i like the aesthetic of it i like how it, there are uh things that actually help with performance as well and it allows me to get off of um what's it called what's in microsoft edge right so google chrome is still going to be used there's no doubt about that uh for various purposes but uh, as a secondary and uh for some other purposes Opera GX is going to be the the one that I'm going to be using now. And, uh, so far, it's been performing great. Yeah. Uh, and the other highlight is uh, on Saturday, um, I think. forget which day, but whenever day the, the UFC event happened, I uh, stayed up a little bit to watch sports because it was right after the transfer deadline NBA and then obviously a huge event was happening in the UFC that I was looking forward to so it made sense and man that was I saw some incredible stuff I saw I you know watched multiple games at least bits of multiple games of NBA and what I saw was an uh, incredible game between Warriors and Lakers where LeBron James broke the all-time scoring record not the all-time regular season uh, scoring record. He still has to do that. But when you count the playoffs as well, he's got the most points uh, ever in the history of NBA. Incredible stuff. And then the game was just tight the entire time. Huge battle. Obviously, you know, you have the biggest stars in it as well. Uh, with LeBron, with Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook, with Steph Curry, with Clay Thompson. He's back now. And uh, all-star starter Andrew Wiggins. Uh, yeah, so end of the game, we saw just Clay go ham. Like looking like his old self after injuries took him out for two and a half years, which is insane. Uh when really hot in the fourth quarter and uh, the game was just so exciting. And then after that, I started watching uh, UFC and man, that event was crazy. Uh, I only watched the last three fights uh, on the main card, which are the ones I actually wanted to watch. So 
Uh, we got a new contender in the middleweight. We saw an incredible middleweight um, battle for the championship. S potentially controversial decision. Uh, I personally agree with it. I thought, you know, Robert would have done uh, a little bit, would have needed to do a little bit more to actually win the belt. I thought Adesanya did enough to keep the belt, but it was a close belt. It was a fantastic fight. We saw both of them sticking to their game plans. It was very strategic. It was a lot of uh, mind games involved, really. And um, yeah, Robert didn't get finished, which is always good uh, considering uh, how Izzy finished finishes some of the you know craziest fighters out there uh, especially in that weight class and the most entertaining out of those three fights was actually the one i'm gonna bring up now which is the heavyweight belt between derek lewis the black beast uh versus uh tai tuivasa and man holy that, that was just insane fight i i gotta recommend everyone to watch that because at least the highlights of it these guys are absolute monsters like i literally i you you'll get hospitalized if you if you get hit by them uh but they just went to war with each other and the result especially the finish man i don't even want to spoil it for you guys because you gotta you just gotta check out what happened insane stuff absolutely monstrous stuff the shots they threw at each other the ones they took oh insane man insane insane and what it means for ufc what it means for division huge impact as well so it's so it wasn't just for fun you know it was a lot of fun very entertaining but also for the future and what's going to happen in division and and the contenders and all of that huge huge effect on the rankings too so uh yeah there's just a lot on the line a lot of entertaining stuff and incredible sports moment out in the same night and um huge highlight i gotta say glad uh Glad when I picked out one time to stay up and watch stuff, it was on that, you know, because there, there could be plenty of other nights <laughs> and you just end up with some very mediocre stuff. It's pro level, so it's not going to be that bad, but that was insane time. Uh, but yeah, th that's going to be it for me. And I think that's going to be it from us. I hope you guys enjoyed our conversation on weather and you can see it's definitely a lot more than just small talk. <laughs> There's a lot to it. There's a lot to weather and there's some other aspect we can even talk about in the future. But that's going to be it from us this week. Thank you for listening.